Well, hello, YouTube. It's been a while. Well, I'm just gonna go on a quick little crop tour here. It's a Sunday, July 12th, I believe. I've never been good at dates. Yep, the 12th. And we'll uh, just basically go look at some crops. I haven't really kept up with stuff and we'll have a little chat in the truck about maybe why I've been gone for a little bit and uh, get you caught up on what's happening around here on the farm. Oh, it's warm. Oh, hang on, copyright. Anyways, well, the truck's dinging. It's been hot, it's been tough. Farming for the last little bit has I'm not gonna lie kind of sucked uh, and that's why I really haven't been doing YouTube videos I got a few things going on uh, for those subscribers that have been around for a while they know that I had that enough field scholarship uh, in my traveling back in February March and how the coronavirus shut it down my travel shut shut down my travel early in New Zealand but I got to see a lot of Australia and I was hammering out videos pretty hard there in the spring and then it just, oh man, I got so tired and I wasn't inspired. So I thought, you know what, uh, if I'm not feeling inspired with the videos that I'm creating, uh, the content probably that you guys were watching wasn't going to feel very great either. So I hit the pause button and just said, you know what, I'm going to enjoy life a little bit here, uh, spend some time with Jess and Jack while they were home. Uh, kind of in quarantine or I guess socially distancing with our, uh, us as a family and I'll, I'll be honest I really enjoyed my time with the family and working with Jack and Jess and uh, it, you know to be honest it felt good to just not have the camera up all the time so that's part of it the other part was uh, the weather here has been tough for growing crops uh, we went from really nice looking crops to uh, crappy up until I guess yesterday or the day before we finally got rain we had gone uh, really uh, quite a while without a lot of meaningful rain and it really was making the crops look like crap and uh, we had some high high heat for us which is not typical uh, of Ontario but you know first of July to the 12th uh, today I could say nine days were over 30 degrees celsius a couple days were 34 before we even added a humidex of close to 40. Um, i'll put the fahrenheit conversion in but that's not typical for us uh, we usually maybe get a half a dozen to a dozen days over 30 uh, but we had like uh, what do we have i think five in a row or six in a row bit of reprieve today it's still kind of warm and muggy because of the rain we got on Friday night, uh, we uh, we got about an inch and seven tenths here in the home farm. Uh, some other farms only got an inch, which is still really good, and some got uh, eight tenths of an inch. So uh, in mills, I guess really a range of twenty mills to like thirty five, thirty six mills, but. Uh, it saved our bacon, and we would define it as a million dollar rain. And uh, that's just kind of a saying we have around here. And really it was. So uh, that's it for now. I'll keep you updated through the video. Let's go look at some winter canola. So I do have some content. I just never got videos put out. Uh, but I just pulled up in here to the canola field and I'll hop out and look at it here in a second. I actually got the drone with me. I'm going to get up and fly it because I actually do want to see how close we are to desiccating the crop. And uh I'll get into that when we're, we're flying the drone, but um, I do have some content. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna share it yet because it's back <laughs> from like June uh, where I was side dressing corn with the uh, fertilizer spreader I bought this spring uh, that you've seen in a couple of videos. Uh, so I got that footage and I got some footage around an issue we ran into with the black beans and uh, we actually were uh, stuck having to replant our black beans after a significant herbicide injury uh, from a rain we got back in uh, the first of June and some cold weather a combination of two so 
I think I'm going to do both of those in a separate video and it's going to come out after this. So the, the, the timing and staging of stuff might not line up, but uh, for those interested in uh, what was happening there, I can at least show it to you. And actually I got some canola staging stuff as well. Uh, so you get an idea of how this canola maybe has progressed from uh, the video where it was flowering uh, to to where we are actually now looking at close to uh, harvest, hopefully maybe combining it this coming week. Uh, so yeah, so we got some exciting stuff happening. We're really close to wheat harvest. Uh, canola harvest is going to happen here shortly. Uh, and uh, yeah, so some, some fun stuff to, to keep you entertained with. Uh, now that uh, I'm back to making videos. So let's hop out, we're gonna uh, get the drone flying here and uh, we'll see what this uh, canola crop looks like. So got the drone up in the air here and you can see the canola. Uh, this farm has a lot of gravel in it and as I rotate here towards the left, you can see where some of that canola is really brown and there's some uh, limey green spots. And that really indicates how much difference there is in soil organic matter uh, and moisture holding capacity. So that whole kind of rectangle you can see there uh, is gravelly soil. And then when you get along that tree line to the right, uh, as I pan that way, uh, there's higher organic matter soil there. And uh, as a result, the canola has not quite matured 100% yet. So uh, we'll hop into it and take a look, but we have to kind of stage it based on seed color. And we want the seeds to go from green to brown or red or black before we can actually apply the desiccant uh, that will basically kill the plant and make it very manageable for harvest, uh, which uh, is pretty important when you're straight cutting canola. Some swath canola, which would be like taking uh, uh, a swather uh, into the field and actually cutting it and just putting into a windrow or a row and then coming back later with a combine to uh, harvest it. But uh, we're direct cutting it just like we would with uh, soybeans or wheat. And because of that, we have to desiccate it to make sure it's even. Uh, but that also means we have to have the plant mature enough to add the desiccant. So uh, it's really quite interesting to see how variable this soil is on this farm. I always uh, have known it's been gravelly, but you can see those little pockets of lighter color among the brown. Uh, those are really just uh, little pockets of organic matter uh, that kind of help the canola hold on. Uh, as I said, we went through some really hot, dry weather, and I think I had a pretty... We'll see if it had an impact on the canola, but uh, you never really like to accelerate a plant into maturity. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the weed as well. But uh, yeah, as you can see, this is kind of one of those spots where because uh, of the soil organic matter, it's just uh, greener. So those are the spots we kind of have to look out for uh, because they're not quite uh, mature yet. But you can see some of those light green lines uh, or the darker green lines as I pan there to put them in the center of the video. Those are actually tiles, uh, and you'll see that in a dry year, uh, where uh, for some reason the uh, crops are a little greener and a little healthier over tile lines uh, when we go through dry weather. And that spot in the far right there was just winter kill uh, that some weeds grew up into. But uh, when you kind of look at it as I pan down here, uh, it's pretty good to go. Uh, the only spot we um, I'd be a little worried about is it. kind of that little green spot in the center of the screen there. Um, and this was kind of nice about flying a drone. You can take a look at uh, the crop uh, from a different perspective and kind of gauge how it's doing and uh, kind of see where things are at. But I think uh, we'll take a little walk into it. Um, and see what it looks like. Uh, we are hoping and the plan is to um, get this harvested before the winter wheat because uh, we would like to have this done first uh, so we don't have to kind of flip between our winter wheat 
Uh, we might have some that's ready the end of this week, uh, first of next, and then we probably have a, another week of delay before the rest is ready. Uh, and that one field that would be ready was just planted a couple weeks earlier. So, anyways, it's kind of an update on the canola. I'll maybe get down into it and take a look closer at it and see what it looks like. Um, you know, in terms of yield, I'll talk in bushels per acre, um, but I will do some conversions on the video. So people that uh, work in the metric side of things, which I should, but I don't uh, all the time, uh, will have kind of an idea what I'm talking about in terms of yield. But yeah, there, it the, looks pretty good. Happy with it. Um, but we're hoping for, I'm hoping for 70 bushels per acre. Uh, that's kind of, uh, I was doing some numbers yesterday at cost productions on all our crops. Now that we have a lot of the inputs uh, in them, like fertilizer chemicals and stuff. Uh, and we really need about 50 bushels the acre to just kind of break even on this stuff. Uh, 60 would be better and 70 would be ideal. So my kind of thought process is if we get 70 bushels per acre on the canola, then we'll uh, maybe try it again. Uh, because actually that makes it fairly profitable. Actually, probably more profitable than crusher soybeans or commercial soybeans. Uh, we grow both crusher soybeans crusher soybeans and also uh, identity preserved soybeans uh, for the food grade market but here's an area that's been mature for a little bit and uh, we're gonna have to be careful as we desiccate because we don't want to pod shatter too much uh, as we drive through with the sprayer that's one thing I, I'm a little worried about uh, we are gonna have a fair bit of probably harvest loss uh, because the uh, of the drought here and it's a little thinner as you can see uh, so we'll see what the yield turns out to be but uh, that's kind of an update on the canola and uh, where things are at so uh, that's kind of a flyby and we'll uh, hop into the field and take a look it's flying back towards the truck so Anyways, canola from the sky view. Okay, I'm in one of these spots that looks pretty dead. You actually can hear pretty good rattle and holy pod shatter really quick. So, um, you can see it's about chest high and the pods, if I can focus in on them. So this is one of the areas that's fairly mature and here's a pod and it comes off really easy and you can see the seeds is coming out already. Uh, so this area would be quite ready to desiccate. You can see a little bit of green in them but it is uh, looking mature. So here's a pod here and it doesn't take much to, you got a rattle, you can hear a rattle in them but you can see just me kind of touching it seeds start coming out so we'll maybe grab some and take them in the truck to look at them but this area uh, is pretty easy to say it's ready to be harvested and desiccated it's hard to walk out in the field because it's a tangled jungle of mess and you can actually see uh, some areas where we're starting to get some shelling so uh, we probably do need to get this desiccated right away so this will be on my list of stuff to do probably tomorrow tomorrow uh, and see where it goes but you can see down in the canopy there isn't any leaves left and it smells like rotten cabbage to be honest so here we're starting to get some loss because the pods are popping open uh, we had a pretty big rain event here on uh, and wind on uh, Friday night so that maybe had some impact on them but pretty cool to see anyways so that's the canola and this is a mature spot. We'll hit a green spot and I'll show you what those pods look like. So this is one of these green spots right along the edge. And if I hold you up, you could probably 
maybe see it or remember it from the drone footage where we had some spots of dead, like way over there. And then we got some spots of green. Uh, so these are green pods still yet. And you can kind of see that it's a little difficult to stage some of this stuff because of later maturing uh, stuff. So I'll take a couple of these back to the truck. We'll grab some mature ones as well. And uh, we'll take a look at what the seeds look like. But that's kind of an update on what it looks like in person. Okay, these are the three pods that are kind of from a mature plant and it's hard to see them and I'm trying to do this with one hand and a camera and it sucks sometimes. I'm a little rusty. Uh, but that's the pod there. Now we'll open one up and you can see what the seeds look like. They're very small, uh, which is going to be making inter harvest interesting, but let's open one up. The pods are so fragile, uh, it's got me a little worried about harvesting because you just touch them and they blow apart. Um, but yeah, here's this one here and I'll just try to open it gently. And there's two rows of seed basically. There's a membrane in between one side versus the other and you can see the seeds are just rolling away. But that's the one side empty and then there's a membrane and then the seeds on the other side. So that's what we're dealing with when we go to harvest canola. You've probably seen some other videos on YouTube uh, with canola but new to me so it's going to be a challenge to keep all these seeds in the combine and make sure that we have no holes where they slide through. So that's how they turn uh, for maturity. They're kind of black or red or reddy brown uh, and that's kind of what they look like very similar to what the seed looked like when we planted it um, so yeah and the wind's blowing through the truck so it's blowing around the pod but that's kind of what a mature canola seed looks like as i said there's the seeds on the other side if i can focus it's best i can do so they're in behind there so, that's a mature one. In the effort to save time, I kind of opened this one up already. Uh, but you can see that's a green one. And the seeds are kind of yellowy brown. And that's a good sign. So even though the pod is still kind of green, uh, I'd be comfortable desiccating that. But uh, as they mature, they get a little smaller. And get a little darker, so... so hard to show you because they're so small but um, that's kind of what we're looking at so desiccate tomorrow which will be fun see how much shattering we get but um, decent sized pods they do shrink up when they mature because here's a mature one there's one that isn't quite mature yet. So there's a bit of a size difference between the two. So that's just a matter of losing moisture and shrinking down. So anyways, that's what it looks like, the canola. The trick about canola is uh, we're not used to such a small seeded crop. And what we had to do uh, this past week, uh, we actually got the combine and flex head or flex draper head ready to go. Uh, and I can just show you those in another video before we get started combining uh, the canola. But uh, we actually went through the grain tank where the grain stored after it's kind of gone through the threshing and separating system on the combine. Uh, it sits up in this grain tank and we went through and duct taped all the little holes that we could see daylight through because that little canola seed will find any little hole it can. I will have to do the same thing to the grain buggy yet. We haven't done that because uh, we're going to get hooked up on the tractor uh, this week, probably tomorrow. And uh, we'll just make sure that there isn't spots where the canola can fall out. 
And then we'll have to do the same on the grain wagons. Uh, I think the grain wagons should be okay because usually with the chaff and some of the pod that's still left in the sample, when you fill a wagon, you put a lot of pressure against that bottom door and it tends not to leak, but uh, we can always run some duct tape across the bottom of them uh, too, just to keep them sealed up. But as you can see how small the seed is, that's why we have to kind of do stuff like that. And then it's just figuring out how to set the combine. But uh, as I said, we'll do a video specifically just on combine and the canola and getting ready for that. But that's kind of an update. I know, uh, cause I've been absent on YouTube. A few of you have messaged Sandy even to say, oh, I really want to see what the canola looks like. So that's what it looks like. And that's what the pods look like and the crops. And uh, as I said, we'll desiccate it with a product called Diquat. Uh, it's called Reglone or well, that's the trade name. Uh, the chemical component is called Diquat. And uh, it's basically, uh, you spray it on and it just kills any green tissue. It's not glyphosate. Uh, I could have sprayed glyphosate on this canola, but I would have done that probably a week and a half ago. Uh, and what I was trying to go for is we we're going through such a drought, dry, hot conditions. I want to, I guess, get as much yield as possible. If you spray glyphosate, it tends to, too early, you can rob the plant of yield, even if I sprayed Reglone or this diquat too early, I would rob the plant of yield because I'm shutting it down before it really gets to maturity. Uh, now that we're at maturity, we can spray it and I'm comfortable that we're not going to give up any yield loss. So uh, that's it on the canola. I want to go pop over and see some winter wheat, our first field uh, that we planted. Uh, there's some interesting strips in it that I uh, want to fly with the drone. So we'll pop over there and take a look and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> 